Okay, so now in this lecture, we're going to apply some of the concepts that we talked about in the last video for the Van Diemter equation uh, and do some calculations. Here you're given a Van Diemter plot for a reverse phase liquid chromatography experiment. Um, and you're told the length of the column or the right extrinsic physical parameter that relates the number of plates with the plate height, um, that's 30 centimeters. Um, so then you're also given the plate height as a function of linear flow rate, which are the Van Diemder uh, axes. And uh, here, a conversion factor of one centimeter, which is uh, 10,000 micrometers. So uh, the optimum flow rate first will be that which we have the minimum plate height at. So we have the minimum plate height when the flow rate is approximately right here, or 0.5 centimeters per second. So at slow flow rates, the plate height can be quite large. And that's due to, of course, the B term. So recall the Van Diemder equation is the sum of these three terms, A, B, and C. So at low flow rates, you're going to have a large B term since it's inversely proportional to flow rate. And that's therefore the greatest sense of band broadening or the greatest source, I should say, of band broadening. The greatest contribution um, to causing the peaks to widen and decrease resolution at low flow rates is longitudinal diffusion. <clears throat> okay, so the main source of band broadening at high flow rates is another term. So over here at fast flow rates, we have the same Van Diemter equation, but now it's a linear term that is going to increase with flow rate. This will increase the resistance to mass transfer, and that will increase the plate height, and decrease the efficiency of separation. So the minimum plate height we said was at the optimum flow velocity, which was about 20 micrometers. And you can convert micrometers to centimeters by dividing by 10,000. Okay, in one centimeter, there are 10 to the four micrometers. So here we're going to get two times 10 to the negative three centimeters for the plate height. Okay, you need to have that in centimeters before we use it with the flow rate, which is also centimeters per second, to solve for other values. So the maximum number of plates is going to be related to the plate height and the length of the column, right? Recall that the length of the column is the number of plates multiplied by the plate height. So the maximum number of plates is inversely proportional to the minimum plate height. And we were told above that the length of the column is 30 centimeters. We divide that by the optimum or lowest plate height that we just saw for previously, and that'll give you the answer. So here we have 15,000 plates, and that's a unitless value. That's the maximum efficiency we can achieve with this separation. The next calculation is for TM. If the separation is conducted at optimal flow velocity, we said that the flow rate needs to be 0.5 centimeters per second. And for TM, right, or the time in the mobile phase, this is going to simply be the length of the column div divided by how fast the mobile phase is flowing through the column. 
right? So TM is for unretained solute, where the time spent in the stationary phase or the retention time adjusted is zero. So that's why you can just divide the length by the rate and it will tell you the time. So 30 centimeters divided by half a centimeter per second gives 60 seconds, right? Or one minute for the mobile phase to a loop. After you have TM, now you can find other factors like the retention factor. So recall that the retention factor is the retention time of the solute minus the mobile phase or unretained time over the mobile phase time. And a solute spends 3.2 minutes in the separation and that's the total time in the column. So it's 3.2 minutes minus one minute all over one minute or the ratio of time spent in the stationary phase relative to mobile phase is 2.2. Okay, for every one minute mobile, that compound spends 2.2 minutes stationary. And then finally, we can calculate the peak width for a solute um, given its retention factor. So the retention factor K allows us to solve for the retention time. And the retention time can then be related to the width. So recall that retention factor is TR minus TM over TM. And this is all 2.7. So 2.7 equals TR minus TM, which is one minute over TM. And I guess I'll solve for this in seconds here since we wanna find width in seconds. So I'll convert it to 60 seconds over 60 seconds. Yeah, you can do the conversion now or later, it doesn't matter. So here TR is 222 seconds for this compound. So we know a few things. We know the retention time. We also know the number of plates, right? We calculated that to be 15,000 op optimized or when it conducted the optimum flow rate, maximum N and minimum H. So recall from an earlier video that the number of plates is equal to 16 times the retention time of that compound squared over the width at the base, W sub B squared. And we can rearrange this and say that the width of the base is equal to 16 times TR squared over the number of plates, all raised to the one half or square root of that. So the retention time we found to be 222 seconds. So we plug that in, 16 times 222 squared, all over the number of plates, which is 15,000. Take the square root of that value. And here we get 7.25. Remember that TR and width are both in the same unit and N is unitless, so this is width at the base equal to 7.25 seconds. Okay. Um, so be able to interpret the Van Diemter plot and explain causes or sources of band broadening at different points on the plot. And also be able to select the optimum flow rate, the minimum plate height, and solve for other values like retention factor, mobile phase time, um, number of plates, and width for a given peak. So for more practice with this, you can visit uh, Unit 2 of my analytical course guide at chemguides.com.